How do? My name's Dave Kay, I'm the Yorkshire Bike Mechanic and welcome to another a video edition on our YouTube channel. Today we've got in an Alpine 6 that needs some new pivot bearings. Let's crack on. So the customer's brought his bike in, it's an Alpine 6. Uh, and he's saying what he's riding is feeling a little bit of movement uh, from the back wheel. So, if you remember, in another, if you watched his other videos, you'll see um, how we actually check for wear on bearings and where this wear is possibly coming from. Um, on this particular bike, it's fairly straightforward. There's only one uh, pivot system on this bike, and it's just above the crank set. And if you feel movement on the back end, it's either one or two things. It's either a rear hub that's faulty and needs some new bearings or it's the pivot system on the uh, on the swinging arm so let's have a quick look if we put his hands if we put his fingers round this particular point here and wiggle the bike backwards and forwards you'll be able to feel movement between these two parts there should be no movement at all but there's loads of movement there so that's how we know these bearings are actually shot and they need replacing there's one on either side they're fairly straightforward to replace, but it's easier if you have the right tools to do it. So let's uh, put it on the stand and I'll show you what I mean. This particular model, uh, which is a newer one, comes with a new style of uh, pivot. Now this actually comes all the way out. I don't know if you can see that there. So that's the pin that goes through here, through the other side. There's two end caps on there. Uh, two little small spacers uh, on earlier versions you didn't actually have this they actually there were uh, some lugs on the side of each particular point um, and you change the bearing slightly different but this is a bit of an easier way what sometimes what sometimes can happen if you don't change them often enough is that this particular pin can get seized in there and it's quite difficult to get the bearings out so it's a, it's it's a good idea to change them pretty often now I suggest that if you're riding your bike um, once, twice a week, um, then every six months I change these bearings and they're worth doing. This is the bearing that's actually in this particular, in this swinging arm. Now what happens is, if you can imagine that bearing in that swinging arm, it doesn't actually get full rotation. As, as you're travelling around, um, as, you, as you're riding your bike, uh, the swinging arm obviously goes up and down there. Uh, and so this bearing only really gets a limited amount of movement, a uh, quarter of an inch if that. So any kind of muck or anything that, that manages to get behind that seal just runs down and sits at the bottom and they don't last very long. Now, the, like, as I said before, they're fairly simple to change, but there's things that we need to do before we actually get to, to this particular bit. So the first thing that we need to do is take the rear wheel out. So that's the first thing that we need to do so if we take this rear wheel out and put it to one side it'll make it easier uh, for the swinging arm to move up and down it'd be easy to get it in the right position okay the other thing that we need to do we need to take the shock off so we take us five mil uh, allen key and we just loosen those bolts there Oh, text message. Okay. Just loosen those. Lift the swinging arm slightly and you'll find that it'll slide out if you pull it from the other side. There we are. Put those together. Okay, put those to one side and we'll take the top. The top pilot bolt out. This allows us to... Uh, Lift the swinging arm up out of the way uh, while we change those bearings and we don't damage the shock or the paintwork in the process. So if we pull that out, there, that's it, and just gently, just put that to one side and we'll just gently lower this, take this out. Okay. So, we'll put that to one side. 
which leaves this swinging arm completely free uh, to move up and down. We don't need to take these cables out. And on this particular model, we don't need to set the crank set out, but we do on earlier models because this is actually a lot further down and it's difficult to actually get to these pivots with the crank set in, so we'd normally take that out, but we don't in, in this particular case. So, for my Allen key, we just loosen them off. They were quite loose, actually. Okay. Whoop. Don't want to lose those. Put that to one side, okay. Now with it, we've got the end cap off, the other one's exactly the same. There's no difference, it's just mirror image. On that one side, you've got exactly the same. And this particular pin, which I showed you earlier, that one, goes all the way through, okay? Now, if these aren't changed often enough, what you'll find is you'll find that this pin will start to seize in here and it might be difficult to get out. So, we use this brass drift uh, there, uh, which is just a little bit um less diameter than the pin just gently use it to that were quite tight with that okay so this will go all the way through okay and there's the pin with the other end on you can see it there okay so now that we've got that out that were quite tight that uh, I've left this brass drifting just to keep it in the same place. So we'll just move that out of the way. Let's take the chain off. And we can tuck that out of the way. Okay, so what we need now basically is in order to stop this paint damaging, we need to um, move this out of the way, lift it up out of the way and keep it in its place so we can get to these, these bearings. So we'll use some tie wraps. Just to just to lift it up. Now, when I take this when I take this uh, brass drift out, they don't forget that there's two small there's two small little spaces that you need. Okay, don't don't lose them. Okay, there's one, and there's the other. And I'll get hold of it. There it is. Okay. There it is. Okay, so that's them too. So if we put them one to eye, we need them, don't lose them. Okay, so what we need to do, we need to lift this up out of the way like that so we can get to these pivots in here. Uh, and we do that by uh, a tie wrap. And we'll just clip that out of the way. That's it and then we're not actually damaging any paintwork on round there. I'll just put a cloth behind there. That's it, just to... Okay, so... Um, so these are, the ball, these are the ball bearings that I've showed you earlier on. This one's a red, it's got a red, uh, it's got red seal on it, but the one that I'm going to put in has a black seal on it. It's exactly the same. So what we need, basically, we need a special tool to get that out of there. Now some people use sockets, you can use that, but I don't recommend it because you can damage the paint um, around here um, and the bearing can come out on an angle or you can damage the bar inside. If you've got nothing else, then you have to use that, but I certainly wouldn't recommend it. So um, this is the tool that we use. Um, we have a full set of these uh, for any bearing uh, out there uh, and they're quite hard to find but we've had them a long time and they're the best thing that we've ever found to take bearings out without damaging anything around them they're really simple uh, you can extract and you can actually uh, insert bearings with the same tool so what we need to do is we need to get this one out okay so we need this this part here and we put us Put a, um, a screw through there, and then the, on the other side, we put this particular point here, and we screw that in there. So, okay, 
okay and we just carefully position it so them two prongs are just on the outside so the bearing can come actually through okay so this one uses a six mil allen key and we just need to make sure it's in right position and i just need to stop that back moving so we just turn it and that'll extract the bearing that's actually in there into that housing here it goes okay so that's that side done okay and we take us as bearing out here and I'll show you what it's like Okay, that's his bearing and if we pull it between his fingers we can feel that it's absolutely shot there's loads of movement in it okay so that needs to go in bin we need to clean the housing so if we just take his solvent and we'll just give that housing a, a little bit of a wipe just to clean it that's it okay and then if we get some anti-seize, which is brilliant for bearings and stuff, because it just means that it's not going to seize in there in future. So we get his new bearing, which is there. Okay, we need the tool again that we've just used, but a different part of it. So if we take that out, and if we use um, that particular part, over the top of the bearing this particular piece goes behind you screw that in there okay and we just need to make sure that all this lines up and it's all square and and everything else before we start to turn it so we get a 6mm allen key and we just basically just push that in there not taking much force at all to get that in there just till it till you feel a bit of resistance that's it and then wind it off okay now that's that one in okay that's that bearing in there and we'll repeat the process on the other side We'll take the other bearing out on the other side and then we'll come back. Okay, so we've got the uh, bearing in the other side. It's exactly the same process as what it was with this one on the right. There's no difference apart from it's the opposite side. So once you've got that bearing in, what we need to do is this particular uh, pivot hole here where this, where this pin goes back in, we need to clean that out and give it a really good clean <clears throat> so if we take again a little bit of brake cleaner or solvent and just try and wind your cloth up and just shove it through there so it comes out the other side and then you can give that a good clean because we want it we want it fairly clean because that uh, pin's got to go back in um, we want it to be able to get it out if we need to get it out in future we don't want to have to uh, bash it out too much okay so let's put loads of grease in there okay you might want to use gloves for this It'll probably protect your hands or your fingers uh, so Okay, and then we'll take his pin that came out and then we'll give that a good clean as well. Okay, now if it's, um, if it's quite rough and there's a few little marks on there, you might want to just give it a little bit of a wet and dry just to just to get them rough rough edges off 
because this has got to go back in so <clears throat> it needs to go back in smooth okay and we'll put a little bit of grease on here as well okay put that to one side uh, if we give these spaces if you remember we took these spaces out of the back where the bearing sits so we give them a clean and if we put some grease on top of there that means that we can actually put these back in with his fingers at the back okay and if we put some grease on like that they'll stay where they are and they won't fall out so we just need to do the same with that one a little bit of grease on that one put that one on the other side okay so what we need to do now is offer this back um, I'll put a little bit more grease on there it's come out um, what we need to do is offer this back um, over the mount so we can put the pin back in okay so let's check as pin goes through as bearing because sometimes what happens is these can actually <coughs> Uh, become a little bit of a burr on edge so we just need to make sure that that's going to go through there it's tight but it does go through I'll just give it a bit more wet and dry I know I greased it earlier and I'm going to clean it and put some more grease on should have done this before Okay, I'll give that a clean. That's better. I can feel that going through. So, um, let's put a little bit more grease on there because I've wiped it off. Okay, so let's get that, um, uh, that clip off, that tie wrap. And we'll cut that off. Okay. Get that out of the way. Okay, now we need to be careful. We need to offer it down. Oh, don't forget them spaces on the back, so we don't want them to fall out. So it just needs to drop just over the right hole, which is there. And then to be in the right position, otherwise it won't go through the hole. So you can do that by looking over the top. There we are. Okay. So that's that pin nearly through. Okay. We'll get the little... Uh, screw that came out put a little bit of a little bit of thread lock on it and then the whole thing's not going to come out when we tighten it up from the other side okay so you probably need another form a lalan key um, on the other side just to stop it from turning and uh, okay and you'll find that when that when that pulls up it'll come a it'll pull through start pull through the other side that's it okay okay so we need to torque it up now. Okay, so we need 14 newton meters of torque. So if we take as as torque wrench and as four mil on the other side, we'll just stop that from spinning. That's it. And it needs to be 14 newton meters. Oh, 
that's it okay let's double check the other side just to make sure it's the same Oop. which it is okay so that's as, that's as pivots done okay we can I can feel that feels a lot better already okay so what we need to do now is put a shock back put a little bit of grease on us on us shock mount pins okay we'll just carefully offer this back in put in the back in first okay so we'll just slide that back in there very carefully not to drop his fingers that's it and then align the pin through the other side okay that's it let's get the front one in again a little bit of grease just give that a clean through there that's it okay now we're going to need to lift this swinging arm a little bit to to be able to line this up so So we'll lift the swinging arm up a bit until that lines up in its place and it should fall into place like that. I put us bolts on the other side but let's put us um, a little bit of Loctite on them. Same on other one. That's it. And then get us five mil. Sometimes you might not need a five mil on the other side. Sometimes they pull up and sometimes they don't. So we'll just wind them up. We need to torque these up again to about the same, about 14 newton meters. torque wrench okay and we'll just hold that the other side because I know that one's going to spin that's it and we'll do the same with this one that's it okay So we kind of done really. Uh, need to put the back wheel back in. We'll pop the wheel back in. A little bit of grease on the axle. Okay, we'll just drop his chain back on there and notice that that uh, chain device there is a little bit out of shape need to have a look at that and sort that out it's kind of come off its original position anyway so that's it yeah so the main thing uh, uh, the main thing is it is fairly simple to do just take your time uh, if you can buy a bearing tool uh, for that pivot, it makes it so much easier um, than having to do it through a socket or whatever, which is a complete nightmare. I'd never ever suggest doing that. Um, 
So, um, the, so that's it. The only thing that I would suggest to add to that is um, there's various different um, grades of bearing. You can buy a, a cheap Chinese bearing or you can buy a Japanese bearing, Enduro bearing. They all vary in price. Um, some recommend Enduro because they seem to last longer. Um, some use a cheap Chinese because you're having to change them every six months anyway. But I'll leave that up to you. Um, uh, you can pay a couple of quid up to 10 quid for one of these bearings. So, uh, you know, the choice is yours. Uh, try it and see how long they last. Um, but yeah, change them regularly. Don't let them put plenty of anti seize in there and grease so it's not going to seize up and it's going to be easy to get out in future. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. It were a fairly easy one. Um, easy to do. Not doesn't take long to do those with the right gear. Um, so, thanks for watching. If you can subscribe and please share, that'd be brilliant. Thanks very much. Uh, see you later. Bye.